ones, you know. And uh, the only way to stop that is for good men to stand up. Was Edmund Burke said, evil can only thrive when good men do nothing? Yes. Right? That, well, that we, we, we have, we've got to do something. That's what it is, you know. Uh, silence is golden, but when it comes to your freedom, it's yellow. You know, we have to stop being scared. We have to stand up and do what's necessary to take back, to stop these bankers, these elite, this government full of lies, congressmen full of liars, you know. People take, take destroying our borders, you know, creating a government. I mean, Im imagine this. You have, here you, have, you are in America, and they're combining America, Canada, and Mexico into one country, the North American Union, and the American people don't know anything about it. It's not even in the press. They'd rather talk about Rosie O'Donnell and Donald Trump calling each other names than discussing the fact that we're merging into one country. And the press doesn't even report it. Or that Paris Hilton doesn't wear underwear. Yeah, Britney Spears. But I mean, who cares? I mean, the fact of the matter happens to be that that tells you how controlled the media is. Here you are combining America, Canada, and Mexico into one country, and you don't see it in the press. Unless maybe it's Lou Dobbs. You don't see it in the press. You just don't it see it. It should be it. the top story so, everywhere. Everywhere. And not a word about it, really. Why? That tells you there's the evidence that it's controlled. They don't want the American people to know what's going on. That's why they don't protect our borders. That's why we're losing our Constitution, the very document that secures our freedoms. Well, I think if you analyze the situation, and if you realize that since the Federal Service has come into being in 1913, illegally, without a constitutional amendment, by bribing a few senators during Christmas vacation, they turned over the most important power that the American government has, the crea creation and issuance of money, to a private bank. Through that private bank issuing money, they have destroyed this country. They have destroyed the purchasing power of the money in this country. They've created social programs that are destroying this country. Now, they've taken over our government, both Republicans and Democrats. There's no difference anymore between the two parties. They control both parties. It doesn't matter to them which one wins, because who's ever running for president will be someone they anoint, okay? Whether it's Hillary Clinton or John McCain running for president next year, which are, they're going to be people that are going to do what they want them to do. And the fact of the matter happens to be that you can't win an election unless you have enough money to win. They make sure who gets the money. Okay, so through that, through these bankers attempting to t taking over America, knowing that America was the freest nation in the world, it was necessary for them to take over America, take away our gun rights of, of uh, freedom to bear arms, and create a country where we, where we become slaves. Because once they took over America, the rest of the world becomes a lot easier for them. And so by creating 9-11, by creating an event, to terrify the American people that were being attacked by terrorists. You create a, a, a world where there's a, an enemy that can never be pinpointed. You can never win the battle. It's a hundred year war. It's a never ending war on terrorism. Right? So you're always fighting this war. And through the war on terrorism, which is the first, the 9 11, which is the first lie, then you create the war on terrorism, which is the next lie, then you create the war on Iraq for weapons of mass destruction, which is the next lie, and it's one lie to the next lie to the next lie, now it's going to be Iran, the next lie, sending more troops and a surge into, into uh, Iraq. It's just one thing leading to the other. And it's always with the event, with, it's always in the point of taking over more countries, more, more dominance, you know, making sure the American dollar, making sure the G8 stays in control of everything. And what they want to do is to control the American people, control the people of the world, put RFID chips in everybody, so everybody's a slave to these central banks. Did you ever talk to Nick Rockefeller after he told you all this and then 9-11 took place? No. 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 But he did, I told you, he told me that you're going to see men running around caves looking for Osama bin Laden. You know, you're going to see men looking for... You know, these guys, and they're going to be, you know. They told you it was all going to be bull. It was a phony. The whole thing is a fake. It's a fraud. Was he laughing, or was he just coldly saying this? No, it was more laughing. Cynical. Laughing. You know, it was more like, how stupid everybody is. 
Look how stupid everybody. We can do whatever we want to do. Well, it is ridiculous. It's like with Al Zakari. They claim they killed him like 14 times. <laughs> and they never said, well, we didn't kill him last time, but we killed him this time. They never even, ch now they're like practicing being ridiculous. Well, what about Bin Laden being in the American hospital, getting kidney, getting kidney help? Yeah. Right? In the American hospital. Yeah. Right? They, they could, if they wanted Osama Bin Laden, they could have gotten him. Oh, yeah. He was right in the American, after the coal. Well, every time our troops really would keep catching Taliban leaders, they would be ordered by the generals to let them go. That's come out in the newspapers, but only here or there. And they kept going, what's, and then Pat Tillman was complaining about it, and then he got shot. I've talked to his brother. Oh, and you then, did? Uh, and then he got shot, and then there was a big hero charging Al-Qaeda. No Al-Qaeda, he just, somebody shot him in the back. Look, we're dealing with complete evil. We're dealing with complete evil. And until the American people wake up and say, we don't want this evil in our country anymore, and we want to come back to a country of decency and goodness and integrity and honor, you know, we're, we're going down that road. And that's what it's going to take. It's going to get people to stand up and say, we don't want to live in this kind of a world anymore. You know, I believe we should pull all our troops out of Iraq. I believe we should leave other countries alone. Let other countries live their lives the way they choose to. You know, stop trying to spread democracy around the world, which is the worst form of government there is anyway. Restore our, re restore our republic to what it's supposed to be. And, and, and go back to what the founding fathers gave us. And uh, try and restore that. Restore the republic. Like the, point, the point of everything is that we have to mobilize. Each one of us. You and I can't do everything, Alex. You and I may be leaders. We may be, t we may be out there and people listen to us or so we have to say and follow us. But the truth of the matter happens to be it takes all Americans to stand together, to stand tall, to mobilize and say, we're not going to take this anymore. I'm mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. We're going to stand up and, 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 and fight the battle. And you and I can't do this alone. We're just leaders of the thing. But other people have to join in with us and stand side by side, shoulder to shoulder, and say, I'm not going to take it anymore. That's what it's going to take to win this effort and to stop cooperating with the government and with all their rules and regulations and to wake everybody up, to hand out DVDs of my movie, to hand out DVDs of your movie, to educate everybody to what's going on. Well, freedom and liberty is what, Amer is what people are, really want. You know, and it's time to stop the duplicity of the government from lying to us. You see, many, many people know the truth of what's happening in this country. They know the truth, like the numbers you gave about 9-11. But they're afraid to stand up. People have to find their courage and stand up and say, I'm not going to take this anymore. I know the truth, you know. And uh, it's like they create a situation where if you tell the truth, you, you're considered uh, a lunatic, you know. In other words, if, if someone goes on a TV show and says, 9-11 is an inside job, oh, you're an idiot, you're crazy. They call you names. You can't be afraid of that. Well, it doesn't so the work truth anymore. Is, I mean, they have no facts. Just calling you crazy doesn't make you crazy. Well, we know that. They also go get kooks, who are kooks, to put them on to then say they represent us. That's right, exactly. Another tactic. Exactly, exactly. And Bill O'Reilly is great at that. Sean Hannity is great at that. They just put people on who they can dominate, you know. But Why well, do you think guys like that, they're not stupid. I mean, I've talked to people that don't. They know the truth. Why do you think they decide to join the evil? I, I, that has to be in their hearts. I mean, I had the opportunity to do that, and then in my heart, I couldn't do it. So it has. But I mean, how could you or I consciously be involved in something like putting AIDS virus in black Africans' vaccines? I mean, what the hell? I mean, it, it's like we're not good guys either. I mean, I don't think I'm like some special, perfect person. What, what the hell's wrong with this elite? I mean, what are they running around doing evil? I mean, they just run around continually doing evil. Well, I, I, think, I think a lot of them think they're doing the right thing. I think a lot of them think they're doing the right thing. Not, not the top elite, but people within the system, you know. But I think that uh, it's, all, it's all about, uh, as Nick said to me, it's about control and power. They have all the money they want. They can make all the money they want. They, they have a machine that can make all the money. <laughs> it's not about money. It's about control. It's about their vision of how they want to see the world in their eyes. And... Um, you know, you and I believe in individuality, in the person being the dominant thing, the individual being the dominant person. Today we live in a world where institutions are dominant, not people. You know, the American, you know, we the people, by the people, for the people.
Now it's with the institutions, by the institutions, for the institutions.